Good morning, everybody. Surprise! I am doing an unscheduled live video this morning. I uh, missed um, being on with you guys, so I thought I would jump on this morning. I'm just checking my logistics real quick. Welcome if you're watching in the replay. I know most of you um, who see this part are watching in the replay, so thank you for uh, watching. I'm going to do a couple of projects this morning with the Night in Bethlehem bundle. It's super cute um, and um, quite meaningful uh, to me. I, I think that this is a really good set to use uh, for your Christmas cards. So I'm going to show you a couple of cards uh, this morning. Um, before I do that though, let's talk about what today is. It is Cyber Monday. Raise your hand if you've already done online shopping. Yes, I did before my kids woke up and then I did something be after they went to school and now I'm trying to focus on work and not all the amazing deals out there. But um, as you probably know by now, Stampin' Up! is doing free shipping all day today. It's very rare that they do um, free shipping. In my eight years as a demonstrator, I think maybe this is the third or fourth time. Um, I they, they rarely do it. And this can really save you a lot. Uh, shipping in the United States is $6.95 until you get to $70 and then it becomes 10% of your order. So if um, you ordered $90 of stuff, then your shipping would be $9. Um, to me, that's a significant savings because I know I always see my total and then I see it with the shipping and a tax. I'm like, oh, um, so to save on shipping is nice. Uh, this order, uh, this special can be on a tiny order if you just needed one thing, or it could be on a large order where you're really taking advantage um, and saving a significant amount of money. Um, if you've been wanting a big shot, that's $110. Um, so shipping would be $11 on that, you would save the shipping. Uh, that I think is probably the best um, thing to take advantage of. Um, but, and then I know somebody who needed to order some blades for her uh, trimmer, and so she was like, oh, I'll do it uh, on Monday because I don't I don't wanna order anything else. I, my budget's tight, so I just need those blades. So it's it's a good deal whether you need something tiny or, or you wanted to get something large. Um, remember that, um, of course, we all are thinking of ourselves. We want this and this and this and this. So you could potentially share this with your husband or your mom, or your friend or whoever um, is gonna shop for you. Um, or you could do your own shopping on Stamping Up and get some rewards. So I just wanted to touch on a little bit of what I'm offering just today, Monday. Um, if you use the hostess code, I'm gonna uh, send you, uh, if you spend a minimum of $25 before tax, you can choose any of the PDFs from my PDF store. Uh, if you haven't been to my PDF store, I have over 100 tutorial PDFs, and most of them include five to six projects. Um, the only ones not eligible for the freebie is the bundled. Some of them I have bundled, like four or five classes in a bundle together. Um, so just a single class, tutorial PDF, which is, like I said, five or six projects. Um, and then if you order up to $50, you're still gonna get the PDF. I'm also going to send you a surprise free embellishment in the mail sometime next week. I'll use the hostess rewards from this um, hostess code and I'll split it between all the people who ordered. Um, find something in the catalog that is that amount and I'll order one for all of you. Plus you'll get my, um, I didn't even put that on here, you'll get my all-star November tutorial bundle for free because $50 is the level for that. If you spend $100, and I forgot to pull those out. Let me grab one. If you spend $100 or more, you're going to get both the PDFs, um, a free embellishment, and the Mary Patterns um, hostess stamp set. This was an exclusive during September and October for anybody who sold over uh, $350 at a workshop. Um, and I have quite a little collection of them from my own orders. So um, the first 15 people to place over $100 orders today will get one of these in the mail for free, which is really cool, I think. I think that's a really cool. I've been holding on to those, and I was going to use them for something, an ordering incentive, and I think this is a good time. So I have 15. That's why the limit is 15 people. Um, so order early in the day if you want to take advantage of that. 
Um, now, if your order gets to $150, you guys, don't use the hostess code. Please don't use the hostess code because I want you to take advantage of the hostess rewards, if I can find them in the catalog. Um, that's like if you're hosting a workshop um, or class and your workshop order got to $150, then you would get 10% of that in hostess rewards. Um, so I would much rather you take advantage of that. And that's on personal orders too. If you put in an individual order, just your own order, and you reach over $150, you're going to start getting stamp and rewards. So if you do that, um, please don't use the hostess code. Take advantage, get more bang for your buck with those hostess rewards, and just send me an email. Hey, I put an order in today that's over $150. Um, please put me on the list for the incentives because I definitely want to still um, send you these rewards. Um, so make sure you shoot me an email and don't use the hostess code if your order is over $150. Okay, I think that's it. Um, I'm going to put that away for now. Um, I did want to say that the last time we did Facebook Friday was the 17th. Those usually get shipped out the following Wednesday, and because I had a house full of company, my kids were home, I did not even get to cut them until yesterday. So I worked all day yesterday actually on them, cut them, sorted them, packed them, and they are ready for pickup from my um, my mail lady. She's going to come get them today, and they'll be to you hopefully by the end of the week. The giveaway that week, here are two winners. Um, for the homemade cards, I believe I have your address, Pam. And Dawn, I'll send you an email to get your address. Um, I will be sending you these cards in the mail. So thanks for entering um, the giveaway. Okay, so Facebook Friday is when I do the giveaways. And I will be having another Facebook Friday this week. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I'm going to do um, something Christmas. So make sure you are back on Friday, 2 o'clock Central. Okay, so... Um, Today is not like Facebook Friday. I don't have a PDF for you. I just um, pulled two projects together just because I thought we would do something fun to celebrate Cyber Monday and you could um, have another video to watch. So we're, I decided to use Night in Bethlehem. I, I have had some requests for this set. I think it's gorgeous. Um, it's a bundle. It comes, a stamp set is 21 and the edgelets, they're calling them, are 32, but if you bundle them together, you save 10%, and the clear amount is $47.50, and if you order it today, you get free shipping, so that's even a bigger discount, a bigger savings, I should say. Okay, so the first one I came up with, this is actually um, from uh, Stampin' Up! Sends a Magazine to, um, to demonstrators, and I just realized I'm not even looking at the video, you guys. I need to pull that up. Um... Good morning, ladies. Thank you. I'm sorry I wasn't even looking at comments or anything. Um, so Stampin' Up! sends demonstrators a weekly email with ideas, and this is one of them. So I can't claim this one. I think it's gorgeous, and it's super simple. I, I really struggle coming up with simple um, designs. So when I see one that I love, I always make sure to pull it out. So this is that one, and that's what we're going to do. I did not type up a PDF, <laughs> so here's my... Crude measurements, this is just a five and a half by eight and a half card base. And um, the, the what am I trying to say? The, the little crumb cake uh, piece in, in the middle here, this one right here, measures five by three and three fourths. And we're gonna use this long, they, they called it a cityscape. Um, I guess it's a cityscape from a long time ago. Um, and we're going to just stamp that in the middle in crumb cake. And I did not get any, um, let's see if I can get this straight without sticking my head in. I did not get any grid paper out this morning. Crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock. And then we're going to take a long piece of soft sky. This is one inch by six inches. And we're going to use a sentiment that says, blessed Christmas wishes. And we are going to stamp that in Knight of Navy. Actually, let's punch it first. We're going to use the banner, uh, triple banner punch, or banner triple punch. I can never remember which way it goes. Love that punch. I use it a ton. All right, now I'm going to stamp this in Knight of Navy. I punched it first so I would know exactly where to stamp my stamp. All right, now we're going to do the little Mary and Joseph silhouette. And I'm doing this also in Knight of Navy on Whisper White cardstock. Very nice. I have a little something on my stamp right there, but we're just going to leave it this morning. 
All right, let me close my ink pad so that we don't have a disaster. And get out the big shot. And I just, the edge, the, I call them edgelets, I guess because these are edges. Um, but this is just a framelit. If it's a framelit that goes around an image, they call it a framelit. If it's a, something intricate that's not designed to go around a stamp, they call it a thinlet. And if it's something that goes on the edge, like a border, they call it an edgelet. I pretty much just call them all framelits. <laughs> okay, so that one right there perfectly goes on top. Use your magnetic platform to keep it in place. And then we're going to do a, what did I use? A two and a fourth inch circle punch on our vellum cardstock. And we're ready to put it together. So can't you see how this would be um, really easy if you needed to make a bunch of them? I didn't get my adhesive, guys. Hold on. I'm not prepared this morning like I normally am. If you needed to make 100 cards for Christmas, this would be a great option because it's, it's I think it's quite simple. Okay, so we're gonna do that one with dimensionals. Lots of dimensionals this morning, as always, right? Always. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. We had a great Thanksgiving. My parents came from Memphis and stayed several days with us, which is always fun. Um, I I'm gonna stick Mary and Joseph on here with a dimensional like this. And then, you know what, I'm going to put one behind Mary, too. I think it needs two. Like that. Then that's going to tell me where to put my dimensionals on the back of my vellum. Uh, the first time I made this card, I did it backwards, and then my dimensional was showing because I hadn't put it in the right spot. So if you will just put them, mirror them like that, they'll be in the right spot. And there you go. Isn't that beautiful? And you can kind of see the cityscape poking through that little circle. I love vellum. All right, so there's your first project. That is the Simple Easy. Um, is that a new, is this a new stamp from the holiday or annual catalog? It's in the holiday catalog, Debbie, um, page 26. And it's called The Night in Bethlehem. It is a great one. Okay, so there's our first card. Now, the second card is more... Uh, let's see. I don't want to say complicated, just it's probably one you don't want to make a hundred of. It's a little more stepped up. That's the, that's the word. This is actually the card I made for my team swap when we had our team meeting last. And you can see it has some embossing on it. I love to use gold embossing powder. All right, so let's do the embossing first. Um, this is a piece of Whisper White that is five. Um, inches by three and a fourth. Can you guys see that? Just in case you need to see the, the measurements. Um, we're going to stamp with Versamark and use embossing powder. And if you haven't done that before, it's it's easy and it's got a lot of wow factor. Um, it's just a little bit uh, persnickety. You need to use one of these. This is called an embossing buddy. And it's just like a bag full of baby powder, really. That's what I think it is anyway. And it's going to remove all the little static cling that is on your paper that's going to put those little um, embossing flakes in the wrong place where we don't want them. All right, so this is the star. I'm going to use the star first, the large star. And then I'm going to use the little stars. And you may not be able to see what I'm doing, but if, but I can kind of see the reflection so I know where I'm stamping. Um, one thing you can do when you're doing lots of different stamps before you put the embossing powder is to do a couple, put the powder, do a couple more, put the powder. That way you can see exactly what you're doing. All right, so now I'm gonna get out my gold and just sprinkle it on and it does stick. You can see how nicely it sticks. Not every ink will um, emboss. There are some tricks to get our regular ink to emboss, I've heard. 
but I have not done that before. So I just use the clear verse mark. Um, and you, one thing I used to do uh, that I have done before is you would stamp on verse mark and then quickly stamp on her color and then stamp and put embossing powder over it. I, I haven't done that in a long, long time, but I think that that works if you want a different color. Um, one thing I want you to notice is right here, there's like a little streak. So I always have the, a paintbrush with my embossing stuff so that I can just wipe off any random little flakes or boo-boos or whatever um, before I heat it. All right, this is the heat tool. It has two settings. And I really like our heat tool as compared to one I used to have because the other one I used to have got so hot that it would like burn my finger right there. This is a lot better. It doesn't, it does get hot, but not that hot. Now, if you guys can see, that starts to change. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a big wow factor for people when they are stamping. If you've never done it before, you should try it. You do have to use a heat tool. I've told you guys before how I tried to use a um, a, um, <laughs> a uh, hair dryer when I first started doing embossing. Um, and yeah, it didn't work. I was trying to be cheap and not buy a heat tool didn't work. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, you can see I'm a little obsessed with Buffalo Check. I cannot stop my 15-year-old uh, daughter controlling her eyes at me every time I bring something home that is um, Buffalo Check. She thinks I'm crazy, but whatever. It's the new Chevron in my mind. I was obsessed with Chevron for a long time. Okay, so I'm just going to adhere that down to a piece of crumb cake that is five and an eighth by three and an eighth. Um, now let's do our die cutting at the little village or cityscape as Stampin' Up! called it. Let's get this over. I'm going to use my precision plate for these because they're a little more intricate. They do cut really well. Um, so you really only need to go through one time. Sometimes you have to, you know, roll it through a few times, but I found that these cut really well. Uh, the precision plate is something that you can buy as an accessory for your big shot. And it is for dies that have more cuts in them. Um, these tiny little cuts, this, this is not too intricate. Um, we have some that are much more intricate. The ones that are kind of like um, stained glass looking, um, have all those little tiny things. It, it helps to get all the little pieces in and out. So with a precision plate, you're just gonna use one of your clear plates and go through and just for good measure we'll go through twice since it's a video and we're live I don't want to eat my words you can see how well that cut all right let's move this guy out of the way and this is a good time to use our dye brush just loosen it up and then it should come out nicely there we go and you be careful with these cute little palm trees. They're very thin and delicate. You don't want to rip them. Don't ask me how I know. When I made these for swaps, I thought, oh, this isn't going to be hard. And it took me quite a bit of time to make all of them. So then I started rushing through and trying to hurry. All right, so there we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, one more thing we're going to cut. Um is, and I don't know if you can see this, little tiny border right here. This is actually the decorative ribbon border punch. And I am actually going to be using this side, the teeny tiny little scallops, um, to put here below this piece of DSP. So this punch isn't like a normal punch where you can just punch real quick. You kind of have to really look and pay attention to what you're doing. It has these images right here which will line up as we slide the paper through. And it also has these little tick lines right here that you wanna line your paper up with. And I'm gonna tell you right now, mine does not turn out perfect every time. Sometimes I have to do it a couple of times to get it right, but it is very worth it. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna make sure that it starts right there at that little line. And then I'm gonna make sure that it's flush here with this edge. We need to make sure that it is flush every time. So you can see there's the start of that. So I'm gonna take it and slide it 
so that it's matching. See here where it lines up and it matches? And I'm gonna make sure this edge is flush. Okay, and we're just gonna keep going. The thing that I, I always forget is to make sure that that edge is flush. Um, and that's where I think I get screwed up. This last one, whoops. There we go, isn't it pretty and cute and fun? I love border punches, I wish we had more of them. All right, so you could see, you could use this pretty edge, but I'm gonna actually just use that teeny tiny scallop. All right, so let's put it together. Um, we need to use dimensionals on here, and I think I'm gonna put this on here first, just so that I make sure that I have it lined up right, and I put the other one on there in the right place. So dimensionals, whoops, well, that's weird. I pulled the whole paper off. Um, a dimensional malfunction this morning. All right, now I'm gonna have it coming down just a little bit so it's not even with the edge there. Okay, and then a couple more, or five, however many you prefer. Put these here. And let's see, I'm gonna do this kind of low, not completely at the edge. There we go. I don't know why I'm not seeing the comments this morning, you guys. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be ignoring you. I see them when I look up at my phone, but I have um, my iPad over here where I should be able to see them, but they're just not coming up. Okay, so this is the Year of Cheer DSP that has all the gold and silver and so pretty. That's a one and five and a half inch piece and I'm going to put a line of fast fuse right there on the edge and let's hope I don't stick it to the table I'm gonna just lay it right on there so that that edge shows through just a tiny bit it's so delicate and so sweet I love it we used to have a big big fat die that cut a scallop border and I used it all the time, it was wonderful. We need more border punches and framelits, in my opinion. They haven't asked me yet, but when they ask me, I'll let them know. <laughs> all right, now this is gonna go right here with some more dimensionals. I usually do three, two in, in two corners and then one in the middle at the bottom or the top. All right, I'm gonna put that up. Now, I was thinking, do I tie a bow? Do I put a sentiment? But I, you know what, I really just wanted to leave that like that, because I just think that's beautiful by itself. So whenever you don't have space for a sentiment or you don't know where to put it, just put it in here. Just put it on the inside. Um, Debbie, no, I'm not, I don't have a PDF for this one today because this is kind of a, uh, last minute decision that I decided to do, but I um, have all the measurements here on the post-it notes for you. Um, but I will have a PDF for the one on Friday. Uh, this says, wishing you a season of joy as we remember the night when love came down to earth and became a song of celebration. Who comes up with this stuff, you guys? It's, God, that's beautiful. I love it. Beautiful. Now, I just re-inked my, my, um, stamp pad and it looks a little juicy but I think we're just gonna go with it this is beautiful I wish I could come up with beautiful words like that all right so we'll just put that inside and call it a day we are done all right so there are two ways to use the night in Bethlehem where's my other one here it is and um, no PDF today, you guys, but uh, remember it is free shipping all day. So if you want this night in Bethlehem, order it now um, and earn those incentives I talked about at the beginning of the video. Uh, let me know if you have questions and I will see you again on Friday at 2 Central. I hope you guys will join me and I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye.